Hello and welcome to Cable Plus Property, the number one online educative platform on all issues related to land and landed properties. My name is Oiza. At Cable Plus Property, our aim is to ensure that all Nigerians and non-Nigerians have at the tip of their finger everything they need to know about land acquisition, land procurement, building construction, planning, documentation and registration of landed property. We provide you with everything that is needed for you to get your property registered and also to obtain your planning permit. You'd agree with me that a builder is one of the pillars in the built environment. And so in this video, I'll be speaking with a man that puts on two caps. He's not just a builder, he's also an estate surveyor. He's no other than Builder Dr. Aladiloba Additional, the head of the department, Building Technology, Yaba College of Technology. Join me to welcome Builder Dr. Aladdin Loba Additional Emmanuel as we'll be talking about the, build, the builder as a professional in the boot environment. It's good to have you, Builder Dr. Aladdin Loba. It's always my pleasure on programs like this. So, to a layman at the construction site, yes. a builder is often not as recognized as a bricklayer. In fact, they are they are often referred to as an engineer you know you hear on the construction site oh engineer sir why is that so <laughs> you can see me laughing the truth is that as nigerians we believe in the sound of the name the builder has always been recognized i've been issue sound of the name in the sense that look as you are now the day you go and read medicine they will forget your name already because they begin to call you doctor they'll begin to call your parent Mama doctor, Baba doctor. Or you do, you read law, you become a lawyer. Because of the sound of the name and the mentality we already had as a nation. But that, is, that has changed, I can tell you that. Because even somebody that read history can also contribute positively to the environment. Let me tell you, people know builders. But the truth is that most people are used to the fact that anybody that is constructing is an engineer. Whereas, I will tell you, what business as engineers and architects have in construction other than supervision of their designs? The real person that does construction is the builder. Is he on site? Is he one in charge of the project? And he ensures everything moves according to how it is planned. He has a lot of documents that he contributes to the construction project. And part of it is a, you know, planning document, because he has to draw the construction plan. He has to draw the maintainability and, uh, you know, <laughs> maintainability assessment plan, the safety plan, health and safety plan. He contributes all that. Then there's also another, another thing he developed. That's the buildability uh, plan. So all this he contributes, but people don't see it. Because, you know, most times we don't, because we are used to something, we want to call for, for convenience sake. Yeah. You are an engineer because you are on site. Let me tell you, the builders are trained in the, in the uh, science and technology of building. Okay? So they know everything, the materials, the proportion of material that comes together for, to give you certain uh, strength value and all that. So it's not something a bricklayer can do. There is a level of mix that you will do that will make your building at the end of the day to begin to have cracks. When the mix of your mortar is higher than the mix that produced your block. I'm beginning to get technical, but it's very important people are informed. So you have a lot to gain when you employ a builder to do your construction work for you. Most Nigerians are penny wise pounds foolish because at the end of the day, if any problem happens, at the end of the day, the building collapses, you lose everything. And that is if you escape with your life. So the truth is that it is better when all the designs are done and somebody comes and says, I can also build. No, I have a builder. I listen to a program where I now know there is a builder who must build. Okay? And that is it. So, okay. most of the work you see are works of builders. But most people call them engineer, mm -hmm. engineer. And when they are tired of correcting, you can't come. In my church, they know me. If you say you are looking for engineer, they will tell you there is none like that there. But at the gate, even the gate man, the security guy knows that there is a builder called Alade Loba in the church. Because I'm even the one in charge of the, all the construction of the church. Mm. So that's just the case. Now, in a construction project where 
you already mentioned the seven professionals involved yes. in the project and i'm you glad said. you are informed too. <laughs> yes i am uh -huh. we have the land surveyor the urban and regional planner yeah. the architect yes. the structural engineer yes. the quantity surveyor the yes. builder and the estate, estate surveyor. surveyor now Beautiful. in a construction project where all of these professionals are involved who should be held responsible for the collapse of the building now you know at the initial stage i told you I said construction is a collective responsibility. Are you getting me? And let me add another maxim to it. You see, bad construction is an accident waiting to happen. No matter the length of time, it will surely happen. Okay? Now, you see, as regards who is responsible, it depends on the type of failure, type of collapse that happened. But let me tell you, most construction collapses start begins from the design table are you getting me there's something we call overloading there's something we call underloading i don't want to sound too technical so that your audience can understand us but the truth is that you see there's something we call sudden collapse and there's something we call gradual collapse and there are two types of collapses you have buildings that are under construction collapsing and the buildings are already constructed uh either too badly that still collapses it just take a period of time the one that is of even more concern is when you have a building under construction collapsing it means up initial there have been a problem so the issue is that people that will be held responsible are when you trace your collapse from the design stage because there are design errors design errors can cause collapse and of course, construction error can also cause collapse. So now, it depends on the type of okay. thing that causes the collapse. Now, if these seven professionals are yes. working together for a project, yes. shouldn't there be um, a check for each other? So if the architect makes a mistake, shouldn't the structural engineer already uh, detect that and then inform the owner of the project so that corrections can be done. No, he doesn't have to inform the owner of the project. He has no business with the owner of the project. He only has business with his co-consultants. Are you getting me? Because the owner, okay, let me just tell you this. We have what we call project team. The client is part of the project team, but the client is not part of the consultant construction team. Are you getting it? Because the client is the most important person, is the one who provides the money. And without money, you cannot do any construction. But the truth also is that all the consultants are representing the clients. And that is if the project procurement, the right project procurement is followed ab initio at the beginning. Okay? And that is why I say penny wise pounds foolish. If you are saying, ah, I can't afford professional builder, I can't afford this and all that, you now carry your work, you now give it to uh, the bricklayer that you think will help you. I have a case in hand now, and I really, he's a young man, I really pity the young man. He's doing a two-story building, and he went ahead and gave it to a bricklayer, and the bricklayer was using 10 mm reinforcement right from the beginning, to, even to the second floor. Until the government now, government agency now visited and stopped them. They looked for me. I went there, I saw even, I, I wasn't even confident to stay five minutes longer under, under that such, such structure. And it's supposed to be a school, it had to be stopped. Are you getting me? That's the intervention. It's still good. It can still be rescued. So, and they're spending so much money. You are the second floor. They're about to, to begin to lay the reinforcement for the second floor. So I told them, if you try this, the building will kill you. It's not a cost. So, you see, all of them have their core competencies. They are a team. And so when the design, design is given to the builder, and that's why you must give your work to the builder. Because when the builder hands you the design, he sees the designs and all that. You will be able to identify errors. So when there are errors, rather than go straight to go and construct, you will call the consultant and say, this oh, there is an error here. I've had a lot of experience. I do construction too. Okay? There was a very big project in Lekki. The engineer designed that project. And while we were doing the rip floor, it was the rip floor, specialized floor we were doing, I discovered errors there. So I called the consultant engineer, structural engineer, Immediately he saw it, he just thanked me so much. We are a team. Are you getting me? We are a team. Nobody is sitting in the position of lordship over anybody. We are all professionals. Are you getting me? And any project 
that will be successful must operate that way. So immediately I saw that. I saw it in his design. I said, this thing you are asking us to do, we create a problem. Or there is a problem. We are at the second floor. And it was a four-story building. So I just told him, immediately he saw it. The building is still standing since 2000. It's beautiful. And that is the essence of construction team. Everybody must, we are all stakeholders. Mm -hmm. What will I gain, even if it's not my fault for any project I am on, for it to collapse? Well, will I say I'm happy about it? No. So as a developer, you advise that I give my project to a team that contains all of the seven professionals. No, I am not a developer. I am a builder. You are mixing no, it up. No, I am saying as a client. Okay, now. as a client. Yes. Okay, okay, you are right in your question. As a developer, you are right. I, I misunderstood you. Now, as a developer, there's nothing wrong being a de developer, even if you don't know anything about construction. But make sure you have a team that will handle it for you. A team of professionals who have name to protect. God forbid, if anything happened on any of my projects, my, the Council of Registered Builders of Nigeria would delist me if I am guilty from their register. That is the government uh, agency of the building profession. Different from Nigeria Institute of, Institute of uh, Builders. Uh, Institute of Building, sorry. Are you getting me? So, not even a person like me that has those pedigree that you have read out. So, I need to be very con. So, a professional will be conscious of his or her reputation. Are you getting me? So, it's better for a developer or the client, as the case may be, to ensure that he has his team. Are you getting me? It may not necessarily be all the team, all the team seven at the same time, but some of them would have done their work and go before even the construction begins. For instance, the land surveyor would have done his survey work, so it's no more feasible there. Of course, and some others do along the line. According to the law, it is an offense for a developer to embark on any construction without a planning permit. In what way do you think a planning permit can be responsible for a building collapse? It will be. Incidentally, I was part of those who move for that, especially the Lagos State one. I was at state at the State House of Assembly, and I remember they asked me to present a paper on that when we were pushing for this, okay, for this law, Lagos State law. I was, I presented a paper to the House and all that, and that gave back to this, and that's why you have the Building Control Lagos State Building Control Agency today and all that. So it is it is a good thing. It is a good thing when you obtain a permit for your work. Are you getting me? When you obtain a permit for your work, it's a very good thing. Because a lot of check and balances will come in. And it's even better for the clients. Are you getting me? Because all those ones, as you are presenting your paper, there are certain things they will look at in your design. They will look at the setback. They will look at the airspace. I'm sure those are familiar terminologies to you. They will look at the airspace. They will look at the setbacks and all that and make sure that the building is functional. Because somebody can build, can construct a building that's not functional. Are you getting me? And so also prevent collapse. Because while you are doing that, there's something they call state certification. Just two days ago, you know, certification uh, was done by the governor and all that. It's very important because any time there is a collapse, there is enormous waste of human and material resources. People are killed, materials are wasted, and so the government cannot sit back and watch that this happens. Are you getting me? And so, this has to happen. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Cable Plus Property. Also, like our Facebook page at Cable Plus Property. Also, like this video, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Cable Plus Property. Till we come your way again, my name is Oiza, and this is Cable Plus Property.